Welcome to this talk entitled, What's Wrong with the Left? <laughs> Subtitled, and How to Fix It. Uh, my starting point is that the UK left is not in a good shape. It's in a better shape than it's been for a long time, and that's great, but Labour today should be 20 or 30 points ahead in the polls, not level pegging with the Tories. Um, in the recent local elections, Labour sadly, and I emphasize sadly and regretfully, failed to make many of the predicted gains that it had hoped for. So my question is, how can we turn around Labour's fortunes and the fortunes of the left and wider progressive movement? How can we ensure that we move forward in a way that makes the left stronger, more effective, accessible, and popular? Now, hand on heart, I have to say, I don't have all the answers. Um, I've got no magic wand, no panacea. But what I want to do is share with you today some ideas which you may or may not agree with, and you might have better ideas, and I hope you'll put them forward during the Q&A. So I've got several ideas I want to talk about. The first is, for the left to be successful, it needs to be constructive, positive, and optimistic. Um, I'm sad to say that so often the left is negative and oppositionist. The left is against the Tories against NHS privatization, against Trident nuclear missiles, against austerity, against corporate power and abuses. And quite rightly, but what is the left for? I think often, not always, but often the left is very weak on what its alternatives are going to be. And when we want to win public support, the public want to know, well, if you don't agree with this, what are you going to do instead? So, knowing exactly what a left government would do is a very important part of the equation of winning public support. Um, I was at a debate yesterday on universal basic income. And uh, one of the speakers, the main advocate was Guy Standing, who I admire greatly and totally support his arguments in favour of a universal basic income. But I pressed him, <laughs> not once, but three times, what will be the level of this universal basic income? How much per week per adult? And how much will it cost for the whole of the nation? And how will it be funded? And he wouldn't answer. Now, I respect his decision not to answer, but I thought, how can you convince the public if you can't tell us what level the universal basic income will be set at, how much it will cost the government, and how it's going to be paid for. People want to know those answers, and to be a credible alternative, you've got to have those answers. Um, when it comes to austerity, quite rightly, the left has been highly critical and oppositionist to austerity. But I have very rarely ever seen any left person explain how a left government would overcome the deficit and fund the public services we vitally, vitally need. You know, simply opposing austerity is not good enough. The public want to know how you're going to plug the deficit, how you're going to fund these services. And I won't go into it now, but I worked out a clear funding package totaling £1,000 billion by which we could not only plug the deficit and ensure it didn't recur, but also pay off a large proportion of the national debt. And when I've spoken about this to audiences, even very skeptical audiences, perhaps not everyone's totally agreed, but at least they've said, you're the first person I've ever heard spell out how we can get out of this mess and avoid the nightmare of austerity. The second point I'd make is that the left needs to embrace progressive collaboration. Unite the many to defeat the few. Isolate the main enemy, the Tories. Build a grand alliance against the Conservatives 
from the center to the left, embracing Labour, the Lib Dems, the Greens, Plaid Cymru, the SNP, and perhaps even the SDLP and Sinn Féin. For the sake of winning, we have to sometimes be prepared to sink our differences, to work with others who we may not entirely or much agree with. But for the sake of the bigger cause, we have to be prepared to work with others. Um, there is a mentality on a lot of the left that we are the only progressives, that all these other people, they're, 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 got, they're wrong. We're the ones who are right, and they have to follow us. That is arrogant and sectarian. Now, part of the answer in terms of building this progressive alliance is, of course, to embrace proportional representation, which Labour, still at the moment, will not support. In 2005, to give an example, the last time Labour won uh, an election, um, Labour got 35% of the votes, but won 55% of the seats. Now, that is not democracy. That is not what the Chartists and suffragettes fought for. In the 2015 election, the Conservatives won 37% of the vote, but 51% of the seats. Again, a clear disjunction between the level of popular support and the number of seats won in Parliament and the ability to form a government. What is truly shocking is that in Britain, no governing party has won a majority of votes since 1931. Every single government has one power based on minority support. Even Thatcher's landslide in 1983 and Blair's landslide in 1997 were based on about 42 or 43% of the vote. That is not democracy. And it breaks my heart that Labour seems content with this flawed and frankly corrupt electoral system whereby millions of votes don't count and we keep on getting parties with minority support in power. If we'd had proportional representation, say, in the 1970s, we would have never, ever had the Thatcher government never had the Thatcher government or the major government. So, to me, collaboration from the centre to the left is absolutely fundamental in powering forward a progressive government in this country. Um, in addition, collaboration to keep out the Tories also means a progressive alliance of anti-Tory parties where all those who oppose the Tories work together and collaborate with electoral deals to win at least key marginal constituencies. Now, as you recall, in the recent local elections in London, in the borough of Richmond, the Lib Dems and the Greens work together on a progressive alliance. Labour refused. But the Lib Dems and Greens ousted the Tories. They would never, ever would have done that if they hadn't worked together. So the Greens stood down for the Lib Dems, the Lib Dems stood down for the Greens. And they wiped the Tories out. It shows that a progressive alliance really can make a difference. Nationally, a progressive alliance similar to the one done in Richmond could probably oust between 30 and 60 Conservative MPs. That could make the difference between forming or not forming the next government. 